Michael Brecker is forever inspiring to listen to in all aspects of his playing. I get so intrigued by Michael Brecker's playing, especially when he's playing outside. And I'll bet that you have this feeling too. Just listen to it. What is it he does that makes this amazingly outside sound that just sounds so natural and so musical? One of the tunes I've listened to a lot is the African Skies on the album Tales from the Hudson. In this video I really want to dig into a few of the lines where Michael Brecker is playing some crazy great outside lines. <laughs> Let's start with the obvious. In this line, Michael Brecker plays over a G minor 7 chord ending on an E and an C, resolving to the 13 and the 11. This totally tells us that Michael Brecker is choosing the obvious sound on the G minor 7 chord, the Dorian scale. And of course, you should train the Dorian scale. In the lesson manual on Patreon, I've added a bunch of scale exercises in the Dorian scale. Check them out. But what's really interesting is learning the sound of the 13 and the 11 on that G minor 11 chord, learning how to resolve to these two not target notes in G minor 7. In these two licks, I experiment with the sound. In the first lick, I basically just roll up that G minor 7 Dorian scale and abruptly hitting that E and that C. Do not make it complicated when you make lines, start easy. In the second line, I play up that G minor 9 arpeggio, use the F sharp as a chromatic approach notes, and enter that 13 and 11, the E and the C. A thing you really need to realize when you are resolving to that E and the C, you are playing C7. The E is the third and the C is the root of that C7. Which probably means that Michael Brecker is thinking G minor C7, so he's thinking a big fat 2-5 when playing G minor. In the second bar, Michael Brecker is playing a pretty standard bebop phrase. But he's playing that on B flat 7. Coltrane uses these kind of phrases a lot. And he's substituting the normal dominant to that C7, the G7 to C, with the B flat to C, which is the backdoor dominant. The B flat 7 is the backdoor dominant to C. Michael Brecker is resolving the beginning of the second bar into the beginning of the third bar. If you want to check out more on the backdoor dominant, which is a really important function in jazz, I really recommend you to check out this video. I've made a link in the description. Back to the link. In the beginning of the first bar, Michael Brecker is actually playing a B7 major line. Which is super convenient because in bar 2, Michael Brecker is playing a B flat 7. So the B7 is resolving into B flat 7. And that B major line can be seen as a tritone substituted dominant into that B flat 7. The B flat 7 is the backdoor dominant. So it's pretty, pretty far out what he's doing. <laughs> If you want to use this, playing the B7 as a tritone substitute dominant into the B flat is a really clear way of expressing this function. And you get amazing cool outside lines when doing it. I know for a fact that Michael Brecker trained these things chromatically down, playing tritone substituted dominance into each other. Try playing in all 12 keys. I've added many more licks and exercises containing the chromatic dominant chains in the lesson manual on Patreon. Check it out. At the end of the second bar, Michael Brecker is using this chromatic third movement, leading into that E and that C. Adding chromatic lines into your playing is a great way to get an outside sound going on. But beware that the tonal center can be very unclear when you're playing chromatic lines. But maybe you want to have this effect when you're using these chromatic lines. <laughs> to keep the clarity in your lines, you need to have clear direction and aim for super great target notes. Eventually, ending up with a line looking like this. But Brecker goes through a lot of different approaches when playing only these three bars. I'll conclude on the total sound of this outside playing later in the video. First, I'll run through more of these great outside examples. <laughs> amazing phrase is this really long jazz line. And my question is how outside can you possibly play? Wait for it. So Michael Brecker is really next level here. So we can agree on that the G minor is the parallel of B flat major, Lydian. So when Michael Brecker is playing F sharp minor B7 in the first phrase, he's playing the tritone substituted dominant F sharp minor B7 into B flat major. And that B flat major was the parallel to the G minor, so basically he's resolving into G minor. 
In this line, I'm playing the same approach F sharp minor 7, B7 into B flat major. Playing the tritone substituted dominant into B flat, which is the G minor. And this little chromatic minor lick leads back to what I talked about before chromatic thirds. Minor third chromatic approach leading into the next target note. Remember to check out the licks in the exercise using these chromatic thirds in the lesson manual on Patreon. This little scale run is actually a D7. So what's the D7 doing there? I actually believe that Michael Brecker is playing a 5-1 progression, an ordinary 5-1 progression. The D7 going into G minor. When you're looking at the next line, the D7 into G minor is a minor detail looking at this G flat major super line that comes into play now. It sounds amazing and you probably won't believe that this is maybe the most simple line there is. Except that fourth jump and that C that's in there. The line is only one scale. G flat major scale. where Michael Brecker is playing around the G flat, the B flat and the D flat. One of the exercises I really recommend you to do is playing around in the major scale, making up different lines using a bit of rhythm. Finding different combinations of notes and listening to how the individual notes sounding can give you super great ideas to just play amazingly sounding lines. Try it. You might find it odd that Michael Brecker is suddenly playing G flat major. What he's actually doing is playing E flat minor, which is the parallel to the G flat major scale. This results in a line around the following chords. D7, the diatonic 5 to the G minor, and then going into E flat minor, A flat 7, which is the tritone substituted dominant to the G minor. Looking at this line, it's basically a screwed up bebop line. F7 bebop to B flat. Brecker is reusing that backdoor dominant going into G minor 7, actually the C7. Tweaking that bebop phrase, playing B flat 7, kind of resolving back to that G minor. But these notes also fit on that A flat 7 or that E flat minor 7. So the notes fit in all instances. Really great insight. Often used fourth intervals in Michael Brecker's lines gives a jacked line but also an open sound. And make sure you get this into your playing if you want this sound, the open jack sound. Train your scales and mix this into your licks. And of course in the lesson manual you will find some exercise and licks containing the fourth intervals. When you're looking and when you're hearing Michael Brecker's playing and looking at this line you see how many things Michael Brecker goes through when he's just playing one line. He's probably not thinking about it because it's so natural for him to play these sounds. But we have to. Starting out with a tritone substituted dominant to the parallel major. Use a minor third chromatic approach note lines. Playing a D7 line into that original G minor, but going into E flat minor, A flat 7, which is the tritone substituted dominant into G minor. Using a chromatic fourth interval to get you off key again. The rhythm section changes the key to D7 altered. Michael Brecker is adding a bit of emphasis on the C, but stays in that E flat minor 7 sound. And then ending with playing the backdoor dominant, probably resolving to three possible chords. Which all fits. My conclusion on Michael Brecker's outside playing is of course he's not thinking all these things I'm saying here but he learned every individual part every individual sound of these methods these approaches learned them hearing them and being able to put them out in your fingers is amazing work being able to emphasize every individual note that changes the color of the phrase to the outside sound. Michael Brecker knows exactly where he wants to go and hitting the exact sound he wants to hear. So one of the questions to myself would be, how do I achieve this? And I know this answer sounds pretty easy. Practice every aspect of every sound there is and get this into your playing. It's simple as that, but it takes time to really learn these sounds, learn these ways, learn the chromatics, learn these tritone substituted dominance in all keys. Really get them thoroughly into your playing. Ask questions, but most importantly, start now. When you have come this far, you must check out the following video on epic Michael Brecker dominance. And of course, you need to check out this very, very important function, the backdoor dominant. These two videos are great. Play music, have fun.